to keep it correctly. Right? Just pour some good and short. Look at that it's me. is our November 2020 uh, Dining Room Gallery live stream where you will discover some new artists. You will learn more about some uh, Kirk's um, stable of artists and we will keep warm on a dark and chilly night and take it slow this time. I was just doing a little bit of perusing. This book is called I See With My Heart, and it is by Jean Pazusta. Those of you who live in Billings may know that Jean Pazusta is an author, and she is also a visual artist. Jean is one of those artists who dabbles in just about any form of creative expression she's exposed to. And right now at Kirk's, we have this book for sale. She's written many books. Um, as I said, it's called I See You With My Heart. And this book is about three sisters and their love and their faith. So let's take a look at some of Jean Tazusta's visual art, too. So Jean just had a pretty large exhibition at the McCormick Cafe here in Billings. And then she selected some of the pieces that I think are best suited for Kirk's Grocery. Let's come over here. And this one's called Palpable. And I like the way Jean has layered this atmosphere in front of the figure. And when I look at it, sometimes it feels as if it's very uh, literal, like there's snow or rain, and there's a very solid figure behind there coming towards me. And other times, to me, it feels a bit more like in the genre of ghosts and things to be some suspect of. But the dark hands that are kind of coming out towards the viewer. Jean made this piece this year. It is acrylic on canvas. And we have it down here. And I think it captures this time of year really well where we've set back the clocks and it suddenly switched from being a time to spend outside in the sun to this time when we're behind the layer of the weather, the layers of warmth that we wear. It's just a nice way to start off this live stream. Here's another piece by Jean 
And not only is Jean an artist who works in all different types of, of the arts, you know, writing, visual art, I think she's done some performance as well. But just between these two paintings, both from 2020, I mean, you just see her experimenting with different ways of putting the paint down, different ideas, different compositions. And this reminds me of the brick walls inside Kirk's <laughs> and outside of Kirk's. Seems perfectly suited to be here. For anyone who's come by lately and gone to a vegan dinner up on the roof, it seems like this could be that hidden ladder that nobody knows about that'll take you up there for a vegan meal. And I love the way she's mixed colors, scraped away the paint. You know, I think she has some really still and static areas in how she's painted it. And then this kind of tumultuous scenario down below where even though it's just the ground, the solid ground, it has the feeling of a storm. You know, it seems like it's influenced by Turner, the, uh, the British artist Turner. Shane's fingers just popped up for a sec. Shane's our cameraman right now. You'll be seeing Shane de Leon a little bit later when I will be the camera woman. Okay. And this piece by Jean is called It Only Takes 12 Steps to Find Sandblats. What do you think that's about? I don't know. You know, you think about there's a lot of significance to the number 12. I never counted. Is there 12 rungs? This There's is like be. when I give tours of the museum with preschoolers. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So yeah, she does literally show 12 rungs in there. I mean, it makes me think of 12-step programs. Oh, I like the shadow back there. Yeah. I love the shadow. All the lines. Here, too, on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like she has really great control of shadow. It's a nice blue. And this whole area down here, these horizontal lines. We also have new lighting here, everybody, so we adjust it to... Uh, That's a little atmosphere. darker, but it's not. No, it's a no glare. Yeah. Talk to us, folks. How's it looking if you're out there? You want to talk yeah, to some Yeah, how many people do we have out there, Shane? It's just Trace, three of them. Ooh, but perhaps the best three possible viewers we've Oh, I'm seen. sure they are the best. They are. Only the best. We're an exclusive kind of club. We are. For those three of you, thank you for joining us tonight. Maybe we'll have some friends joining with us. Huh. And there are friends they didn't, it didn't just drop to two. That's right. Thanks for sticking around. We didn't scare you off by calling you our friends. Well, I want to say something about this. So I like, so back here you can see that they've buffed out, like in graffiti, it's called buffing. The, the buff man comes by and he buffs out your graffiti. And you can oh. see this here and it's like a buffed word, blats. Okay, like the title. Like it the title. It only takes 12 steps to sand blats. Now blats is an old beer as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so blats is an old beer. So I think what this painting is saying here for me what I'm going to read into this as a literal translation is it's a 12 step program to sand blats to get rid of your alcoholism, blats being a beer. So maybe Jean was just like hot on the blats train at some point. Or telling a story of someone she knows. Exactly. Yeah. That's what art can be. Or it could be a story as a metaphor. There's so many layers to it. Yeah, but I like how those, like you said, those really literal visual elements tie into a story. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that even though it's, the painting is pretty flat, you get down here and it has this beautiful chunk with these beautiful colors that shine through here. Mm -hmm. That little bit of that cream color. Yeah, you get a lot of texture in there. And I noticed before we started, I don't know if you can see this out there in TV land, but do 
Do you see over here, Shane, where there's this dark? Hold on one sec. Oh yeah, I'll let you guys get in close. That looks great. Now you can really see what it's like. And these lines are just scratched in there. Yep. Right into the thick paint. Like if you can see. And then come down a little. Yeah, almost there. It just looks like an abyss on the side to me. Oh yeah. Kind of looks like a Maystar painting. And then I love it against the, the actual brick. Yeah. Jean's painting a brick against the brick. Way cool piece. Thanks, Jean, if you're out there in TV land. And Jean's also a docent at the Yellowstone Art Museum, which makes her one of the most special people in town. Yeah, that is true. So here, there's always a little bit of a clothing rack at Kirk's, but this is a little bit different. Shane recently had a show up at 407 Gallery. This is Shane DeLeon, our trusty cameraman, Woo. proprietor of Kirk's Grocery, artist, musician. And at one point he was calling this work trashing, but then he decided <laughs> to change it. Um, and, you know, I think all of us have clothing that has significance to us, and we're not wearing it anymore for whatever reason, and we can't bear to throw it away. Exactly. I love that camo shirt. I love that camo shirt, even still. So Shane still loves his shirt. And then he's often pulling in writing. Um, it could be anything from to-do lists to old letters. Are these old letters in this one? This is a, a mm -hmm. this says Tucker and a Killing Anvil. So I think that's a, of Mice and Men, maybe. Oh, so this is your old school work. This is old school music. work from like yeah. the 80s when I was in high school. Yeah, this is old. But I love how it's curling off this edge here. Yeah, that's very Shane de Leon. Falling apart. Keeping it real and falling apart. That's my style. That's Shane's style. So now these are available at Kirk's and they, they sit on this strange line, right? You could buy it and you could put it on. But like he said, you know, it's kind of coming off the edge. This, this one I think you could probably get on a couple times. So this one you could wear a couple times. If, you're, if your partner or someone you're hanging out with wanted to help you get into a shirt, you get this off and on a few times before it fell apart. Or if you have someone who bottles for you, they might also <laughs> be wanting to help you with that too. <laughs> so I this love is, this purple. It's so great. And that purple is very much signature Shane De Leon color. The use of the ink is very Shane. I mean, it's a very Shane piece. Um, I think for a lot of people, they'll just put it up, frame it. But it can also be worn. And it's not the only one. I'm going to choose another one. Which one do I want to show? People this one. This yeah, I'm going to come back this back. way. Why don't you go this way? Oh, you'll set back. Sounds this. Great. So this also shows you that Shane, for everybody out there in the internet land who wants to get a sense of um, how big of a person Shane is, this is one of his shirts. These are my knees. And this one is great because Shane was using this ink from China. Is it Sumi ink? Uh, yeah, it was. I don't know what it was called exactly, but it was some sort of Sumi ink, yeah, something similar. So it was brought to him as a souvenir from China. He kept it around for quite some time and never used it. And then he entered this period where he was using it on everything in the last couple of years. And so you see the black blacks of high quality ink, how opaque it is and how strong it is. But then Shane loves to water things down or to mix things with watered Elmer's glue. And so you see I think especially because of the type of ink this is, how that opaque black looks like the sky or the water or other kind of ethereal organic elements anywhere that the waters hit it. And this one, instead of having kind of childhood ephemera, we've got State Farm uh, return envelopes in here. And I don't know the story of this drawing. What's the drawing of Marley's? Marley did that. Oh, so Marley's Shane's daughter. 
She lives in Portland, Oregon. Feel free to uh, give a shout out to her if but you're But that in was like maybe 15 years ago or something. She did that probably 15, 20 years ago. Oh, you know, you come in close and it's a little drawing of someone holding a carrot. Her mom always had a garden. And so it's a drawing by Marley? By Marley, yeah. By Marley, when Marley was maybe under like 10. Under 10, I would say. I mean, she's a pretty good artist, so. And Shane, how much do these pieces go for? Oh, I'd let that one go for 50 bucks. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, if you're a collector of Shane's work, I feel like letting this go for 50 bucks is kind of wild. It's worth considerably more. He's got this metallic paint in here as well. And it's just a perfect example of how Shane works. He grabs what's nearby, and what's nearby changes over time. It might be clothing at one point, it might be letters at another point, it might be protest signs at another point. Shane's always working with what's there in his space and making art out of it that's very, very much a signature of his work. Just show this one. It's the last one. If you want to see the others, you got to come by Kirk's Grocery. That's Wednesday to Friday, 3 to 9 p.m. We're still open during COVID. But not a lot of people can come inside, and you have to wear a mask. Please wear a mask. Please always wear a mask. And if you are not able to come to Billings, Montana, and would like to see more, guess what? Shane's got FaceTime, so he's happy to show these to you at any a lot of this, none of this stuff by me is available on our website. This, you got to come down and get it. But a lot of work here at Kirk's is on our kirksgrocery.com. Oh, that's, oh, that's fun. Oh, I thought it was a little folded piece of paper, but it's just something falling apart. I love that eye. Yeah, look at that. And I love this piece, too. Yeah, that eye is perfect. So a lot of these stamps I just found out on the street. There's a good story about this piece. Here's an envelope, Ray Lampy. I found a box on the street of, on, of stamps mainly, but it had some letters in it, and this was a letter that was in it. And I used it, and then I had it at the show, and John Lodge knows this guy. So, you know, it's only Billings and it's only Montana, but that's interesting. John Lodge is a renowned conceptual artist who lives here in Billings, Montana, friend of Shane DeLeon, and the Venn diagrams of John Lodge and Shane DeLeon overlap more and more every time they check. So this is a piece that I think you could wear, but it would be like a statement piece. <laughs> Let's say you're going to the Met Gala online. Yeah, yeah. You want to post an image of yourself. You're not actually going to be there, That's right? what Santa's wearing this COVID Christmas. Oh, this might be exactly what Santa would wear. Do you dress up as Santa? Because this could be perfect. Yeah. And if you celebrate Hanukkah, it's a mitzvah. And how much does this one go for, Shane? The same or? No, we'll put this one at 75. This is for people that, uh, you know, are on the live stream. You came down here, I probably would have had them at 175. But tonight, I appreciate the four people out there taking time out of their life. Their busy life, taking a taking a little droll from the stroll, or the scroll. A droll from the scroll. scroll you know. A droll. <laughs> droll, you know, like. Like a droll, dry, dry approach to the scroll. <laughs> yeah, like you want to slow down. Oh. Droll, droll, as in slow down. We can find. There's a. Like a droll? Get me a dictionary. Who's out there? Get a dictionary. Yeah. Get us droll. Can Who we use droll in that? Uh, our viewers to reference. The dictionary for us. All right. Cool. My stamps. I also love that this is my. Stamps. Oh yeah, that's mine from a, being a little kid. That's my handwriting from I don't know third grade. My stamps hasn't changed a lot. My handwriting is a little. I had one. That's a real statement piece there in itself. <laughs> <laughs> my stamps. Here we go. I'm done. But yeah, my, my, my grandfather was a philatelist and I uh, went to the Smithsonian with him uh, to check out the Smithsonian's exhibition of stamps a couple times when I was in Washington, D.C. with him. So that's interesting. That is interesting. I know you do have a history of philatelism and your grandfather. 
Okay. So let's take a look right here. Marla Goodman. So Marla Goodman has had a few pieces of the Kirks. Some of you might recognize her work as painter. Some of you may remember that special night at Kirks when Marla Goodman taught people how to play the theremin. Mm -hmm. She is a theremin player. She's pretty well renowned. And she also has quite a few alter egos. So this is from a series that she has that I think is pretty quite popular with her fans of a variety of scenarios where things are on fire. So we have this sort of um, image that might be considered idyllic by some people, or it might be considered sort of a colonialist norm by others. Um, and it's on fire. And the children don't seem to be aware of it, or afraid of it, or acknowledging it, or maybe they're immune to it. This is a nice piece. It's a nice piece for the home because it really does upend the idea of a photo, maybe from the past, people having fun. You know, Marla, I feel like she pokes fun at a lot of the conventions, um, a lot of things that we're used to seeing in a certain way. She kind of upends that, shifts your perspective. This is Marla Goodman flaming swing set, $430. Marla's going to be having a show here next year with a bunch of her pieces, hopefully. We haven't solidified it or what it's going to be. She said she's been working on collage recently, and mm -hmm. as of real late, she's been making comic books, kind of cutesy, uh, mm -hmm. this little country mouse kind of thing. Yep. I feel like there's a lot of potential there. I've been to Marla's studio and seen some of her work. Mm -hmm. She has a whole range of things that she dabbles in and that she excels in. Um, this piece by Emily Davidson, which is sold. I'll come around this way so you can see. Um, this is Albino Christ. With a small, sainted kitten. I like how she's brought these stars all the way around the side. Mm. Like when we were looking at the other painting of jeans over there, how the sides can be an important part of art, or the edging. Look at it like this, the fingers come all the way around. And that's true, you have artists who don't, don't treat the sides at all, who would rather have it framed. And then Emily also, she comes down underneath too, the legs, the robes. Emily's gonna have work in our February show. She's going to have some new work. We're happy to do that with her. We've sold most of the work that's come through of hers. We have a, a couple other pieces still here. If you want to come down, we could look at them. If you're interested in Emily Davidson's work, I do know that she has uh, been featured in Juxtapose magazine. Yeah. Um, and she's great. Well, she is great. I mean, you can see, especially on the screen, you can see... When you look at the face, well, I love that kitten, that sainted kitten. And if you go up, you can see really well the transparent fabric over the face. And you can see that she just has a wonderful palette, that she really knows what she's doing when she's mixing color and when she's creating different effects with light. It's not as easy to see on the screen, but that navy blue in the background, you know, it's it has a lot of different effects in there. Almost a, a dark evening with clouds. Where you can barely <laughs> yeah. see the clouds. Kind of up here, you can see it. Yeah, you can see a little bit up there. Trying to get our lighting better here at Kirk's. We don't really have natural light, so. Nope. I guess no one's having natural light tonight. It's pretty late for natural light at this time of year. Yeah, the natural light has faded with the seasons, so. 
So yeah, Emily Davidson, okay. another Billings artist here in town. And that's Albino Christ. Now Jody Leitner, very well known. She's a Billings artist, but she's shown recently in Seattle, right? Here in uh, Montana. I believe Kansas City, Helena. I don't, the halter. Jody, her work has been shown, I think it is the halter. Had some really great, great pieces I really, really liked. And this piece by Jody is two dimensional. Um, it's acrylic on panel. But for anybody who knows her work a little bit, you know, she has a lot of pieces where you get that same effect that we're seeing in the paint but she'll use mylar or other sort of three-dimensional items to give you the same effects. And Jody, as you can tell, is interested in structures. Interested in structures that have openings, have secret entrances, have many, many points of access or don't have points of access. And I think that's what keeps Jody's work really consistent, even if she switches from paint to mylar. I think she's used rope too. Is that right, Shane? No, those ropes were drawings. Oh, that those was those ropes big were... pieces at the halter there, like eight to 10 feet drawing of ropes and knots. So if you Very imagine, drawing eight to 10 feet drawings of ropes, knots. A lot of her structures, they hang in the air, like you see here. And so Kirk's Grocery is happy to have a couple pieces by, or actually one piece, a diptych by Jody, Unconscious Hideaway. Let me step back a little bit, let you see. Unconscious Hideaway by Jody Leitner. $600, you get both of these pieces. And we mentioned the stable of artists here at Kirk's who just have fantastic work. And another one of those artists is, I bet some of you know. Steven Gluker. Steven Gluker, you say? Mm -hmm. Pull this out, let's get some fresh. Let's get some fresh paper. Steven Glukert. He's a man who likes to make machines. He makes precise machines. He makes imperfect machines. Some are mechanical. Some are, made, are driven by your own hand, like what Shane's doing now. A lot of his machines produce art. And so what happens is if you buy a piece of his art like this, not only did you buy a Stephen Gluckert piece, but it continues to make more Stephen Gluckert art for you for as long as you keep using it. We had a piece of his that instead of having a long, long coil of paper, it had individual cards and he had pre-signed all those cards because again, then you have a Steven Gluker art making machine and your collection grows and grows and grows. And if you stop for one second, I'll just show, you know, not only does he build this machine out of sort of found interesting objects, can also see all the touches here of the paint that he's used this little box which is where we keep the paper got this knob Stephen Gluker this one is called recipe 555 drawing machine only a hundred and eighty dollars for your own Stephen Gluker but wait there's more if you buy this piece tonight, right now, while we're live, we'll throw in a Stephen Gluckert catalog. Holy cow, that's a great idea. All mixed up. 
Now, maybe some of you were in Missoula, Montana, and you saw his fantastic exhibition at the MAM. Or maybe some of you were in Billings, Montana, and saw that show when it came here to the YAM. But every catalog is personalized on the cover because that's how Stephen Gluckert rolls. Oh, Shane's going to pull one of these out right here. Oh, just gonna, oh you know, yeah. They all have different covers because they're all uniquely made. It was actually designed by John Lodge for the layout of this book. John Lodge. This one is so broken apart. Let's take a look at this one. I'm going to come into our outstanding lighting situation here. And you get to see, oh, these were such great pieces. Um, these are these are examples of other machines that were up in this exhibition and you can see that he's just a master of taking found items transforming them into sculpture and having those sculptures be fantastic oh I love this image this one is called cowboy looking at James Terrell 2015. Stephen Glukert was also a curator at the man, and he uh, makes some pretty funny and interesting references to art and to the way we behave around art. But what's this? That's another book we have here at Kirk's by Jason Jam, another awesome local artist. Oh, Jason Even Jam. Even though we're out here just showing you art, telling you about art, we do love to sell art. You can buy art at kirksgrocery.com. It's a great place. You know, you got a lot of the different holidays coming up, and you know, you love your family all the time. We love them every day. Sometimes it's good to get your loved ones a different gift every day for a year, and we could be one of those or 365. Of you, those. you got 365 gifts available I in do, a year? I do have 365 gifts available, God. and each of them unique. Anyways, Jason Jam, local hero. He is artist, a hero. And just all around awesome. Oh, this is a great first page to open. Just two kind of different styles right off the bat. Because mm -hmm. what Jason does well is study, learn, learn a style, master it, learn a different style. I've seen him go through learning how to apprentice tattooing. You know, he can do so many different. Oh, he's a master pumpkin carver. He plain air painting. Absolutely. Got illustration, it. comics. Draftsmanship. Uh, just everything. He can do it. He can teach. <laughs> That's just a great drawing. And he has a great sense of humor. Humor. Especially in these books, but... Yeah. Anyway. And these are from A uh, Hundred Drawings in a Hundred Days. Mm. Uh, and he was doing these, I believe, every two years for around a decade. Uh, I believe he, he made these books. Um, and he would do it from January 1st until whatever that is, sometime in April or May. Whatever 100 days rolls out. And you can see that Jason really spends a lot of time considering and studying and practicing all the real basics of outstanding drawing. You know, of you composition. Know, line control, width of line. I mean, just, you know... I love it. So this is day 52, uh, February 21st, 2013, Jason Jam. So if you're a fan of Jason Jam or if you want to become a fan of Jason Jam, either way, this book is a fantastic investment. Yeah, they're $15. What? Yeah. yeah. I believe he had them bound himself. These are his tools right there on the cover that he made them with. 100 drawings. In 100 days. It's quite a feat. And, uh, I mean, a lot of people try it, and a lot of people do not keep it this um, exact. They become a lot less loose. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and it's not just that he commits to the 100 days. is that I feel like he's such a great artist. And you see that quality every day. Now, Shane, our recording device, just let me know that... We don't have all the time in the world. Where are we at, 20%? I think so. we got plenty of time for 20%. Let's turn to Juan Martin Del Campo. Yeah. Now, Juan is someone I melt. I, I melt. 
I melt with. I love Juan. Juan is someone I met uh, through the music industry. I was on tour. I believe I met him in Portland, but where I really remember knowing him is he had moved to Los Angeles, um, and he was living with uh, his partner, uh, who he's still with, in an apartment in Los Angeles, and Rollerball would all go crash on his floor, and he was working for record labels, and he ran a record label. And that is how I know this awesome fellow, who... Uh, We're getting hearts. He has some really... He has a thing where he works with, sorry, I'm just staring at it myself. We've had this in the back for a couple months, so we just brought it out. It's beautiful. He works with glass. He has a project called uh, My Secret Life in Glass, and um, working mainly in the classic form of stained glass, usually working with homosexual erotic art, and uh, it's wonderful. I love his work so much. A lot of it has to, you know, a lot of it they'll be like creatures, you know, maybe in like some bondage gear with uh, elk antlers, you know, and some male slaves like leaning down. I don't know. He's just wonderful. And this one, so I reached out to him when we opened Kirk's Grocery and I said, hey, Juan, I'd love to bring some of your work up to Montana. And this is what he sent. And this is the first piece I've ever seen uh, where he's used velvet like this and kind of did like a collage, which always is great for me because I love collage, I love mixing media. Um, but it's so rare, I've never seen anyone work with uh, stained glass in this way before, you know? Well, this is velvet, my friends. This is stained glass and velvet. Beautiful piece of art. Mounted on canvas. My instructions were to make it just touch the floor, which I believe we have done. Let's see if I can step that far back. You could just touch the floor. Looks kind of like a cape, almost like, you know, you'd see some wrestler come out. Mm. Or James Brown. Or James Brown. And it's got these two naked, beautiful men on it. A very phallic grip. I love this material here, how it's, I don't know, it's yeah, so Yeah, I don't crinkly. understand what this is. It's like glass, you, right? Or? Yeah, it's it's glass, and it's something and something and something's happening. If Juan's out there, he could tell us. I don't know. I don't know the material. I just know it's glass. Cut, yeah. cut down to shape. I love it. Yeah, you, if you Google My Secret Life in Glass, you'll find lots of work by him. Uh, really great stuff. Spends his time in Mexico and Los Angeles uh, with his husband. Juan Martin Del Campo. Stained glass and velvet. Yeah, look at all those sparkles. I mean, it's very hard to get the exact feel of this velvet, but you can see that it has a sparkle to it. Whoa, whoa. It's a lot of glare. The only problem with stained glass is glass, especially metallic glass, reflects the light. But it gives you a sense of the composition as well. It's a little washed out, but I, oh, there we go. Oh, no, we're gone. There we go. All right. It's over here working on the lighting. I'm trying to keep it good, you know, that we are back to the way we started, just with a simple phone, live streaming from a phone. Uh, we've bought a lot of gear over the last six months. We've been up in our games, and this Friday, we're gonna have our first Fridays at Kirk's live stream. And uh, it's going to be a, a good time. Last week we had Murad, who's a local uh, industrial artist, uh, perform, and Nicholas Rogers. Uh, this week on the bill we have Curtis Thompson as our musical guest. So tune in at 7, live stream, Kirk's Grocery. We're going to have music, uh, maybe some poetry this Friday. It's going to be great. And I'm working on a monologue, so we're going to try to run it in the uh, aspect of a talk show. Ooh, but with hecklers? Hopefully we'll get to, uh, we haven't had any hecklers tonight, you know. Hmm. The hecklings, uh, you know, people are just being really nice to each other right now. The whole world's changed, you know, now in this new economy. Um, yeah, it's a new economy. Let's come over here. Let's see if I can get my... Let me get this over here. This might be shadow out now. of here. There we go. Oh, these are so cute. So this is from Stefania Pedretti. 
These are all untitled, and I got these from her in 2018 when I was on tour in Italy. She's an Italian artist. Um, I know her through music once again. She's in a band called Ovo, which is like a doom metal band. Uh, she's really into like ritual music. Uh, and she's just a wonderful person who I personally have toured with in the US and through Europe and just an old friend for like 20 years. And when we used to tour a lot, she would just draw postcards on tour constantly, just sit in the front seat of the van and draw on little postcard size and sell them every night for a dollar. And I saw her sell hundreds of those um, throughout Europe and in the US. And then she started stitching these and she was selling these at her shows. And they have been raised quite a bit due to, you know, her band Ovo has gotten some popularity and her artwork has been shown around. And these are just pieces we got. I love this one right here that you're looking at. We called it Twins, but it's untitled. She's taken this old doilies and pretty intricate one at that already. And then put this two-headed um, woman on top of it. A lot of her creatures have, a lot of her drawings, the uh, humans are dismembered or there's multiple heads, uh, dis, you know, um, body horror, things like that. Blood gushing, I like this blood gushing right here. This is real nice. Just popping out of the arm that's been cut off. So delicate, up against that delicate flower. And she's real cool. She's got dreadlocks that touch the ground. She's about five feet tall. She's Italian, she's awesome. Vegan, lifelong vegan, long, long time. But wait. One more. There's one more piece here. The dancer. And uh, we're gonna do something right now. Oh. Because we love Stefania and we love the four people who are watching right now. Oh, what are we gonna do? Well, if anyone's interested. Uh, oh, what? Well, Stefania's in that band Ovo, I've told you that already. Mm -hmm. um, and she uh, is on this CD right here that is nearly out of print. It came out in the 90s. I'll come around this way. Oh, come on, um, show us. And another Stefania. artist we represent here at Kirk's Grocery is uh, May Star. And this is a hand, this is a painting of May's. She would just paint large pieces of paper that I got. I was a printer and we got all this paper. So an, a reproduction or an original? This is an original. And she would just paint these large pieces of paper with paint or there's some glue on here. She would, all the, every single cover is different on all the CDs. She, we made a thousand of these. Mm -hmm. Came out on Nilla Cat Records. And uh, Stefania, the woman whose uh, doilies these are, is on here. And if anyone comments right now with any sort of comment and or uh, instant messages us, mm. they're, uh, is that what it's called, instant message or direct message? I always get it messed up. Just, if they just chat just in? Just say something, say something. We're going to send this to you. All Postage right. paid. So I got of, it. As of right now? Right now, if anyone says anything. Okay, say it and then send us a, uh, who said it? Susan Stone? Said five or watching. Five or watching. We see three. But Susan, yeah. Are there a secret too? Or is she with four others? <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. But yeah, so Susan wins. Susan, Susan comes in with the comment. Wow. So Susan, if you want to send us your uh, address, we will just mail this to you free of charge. Woo! Comes with an original May Star painting, an artist we represent here. In our last show, we sold six of her paintings at $80 each. Um, so right off the bat, I would say just based on a square inch, this painting is worth, uh, I don't know, $20. We also have Ryan Treat saying, I'll pay for the shipping. Miss you guys. Oh, Ryan, we miss you too. Susan, were you interested in this CD? Otherwise, we'd love to send it to Ryan. I, I'm not sure because we always have a time lapse here. I'm not sure if Susan posted in response to the CD or if she just posted. Yeah. And we saw it I around that so. time. I think Ryan posted with great enthusiasm. Well, we will be sending this to Ryan. Please send me your address, Ryan. Ryan is a regular here at Kirk's until he went off on his journey in life. He's a young guy uh, and went out to learn engineering school down in Arizona. 
and he's just a good friend and a great musician. He's in the band Rookie Card, uh, and there's tons of Rookie Card uh, songs if you go on sure. I think it's called Rookie Card Bandcamp. And there's tons of Rookie Card merch in Billings. Yeah, here at Kirk's, we got it. If you need a Rookie Card shirt, you get a hold of me. When you moved off, you sent those on. So here, I think this is going to be the last piece we're going to show tonight. This is a piece by Renee Audette, who opening on December 4th, which is uh, the opening of our new exhibit, we will be having a Renee Audette retrospective. And this was made when she was over at the Archie Bray. The Archie Bray, but that is a famous place for people who are ceramic artists. Quite famous indeed. Yeah, and she was there for two years working on art. Well, oh, I didn't know she was there for two years. Yeah, she was there for two years. Wow, full time, right? Full time, I believe. Two years. It was a two year scholarship, and she made some amazing work. And uh, this is a piece, and we're going to have a ton more. Large pieces. Installations. She's got a piece called Cats and Dogs. Uh, it's all these cats and dogs that are ceramic, uh, kind of coming out of the sky, falling down the wall, uh, and then covering a woman. And what I like is that a the, lot of her work from the Archie Bray, it's a blend of work that she's sculpting by hand and then her having these methods of taking items from thrift stores and reproducing them in ceramics and then mixing them with pieces that she sculpted by hand and all of it in conjunction with one another creates this unbelievable environment um and they're they're huge yeah i'm really excited to install them so yeah this is our backroom gallery show oh Sketch susan so says cute. to send out the cd to ryan okay Thank that you, Susan. She joined the other four. <laughs> thanks, Susan. And thanks again, Ryan. So make sure to come down to Kirk's. We're still open Wednesday through Friday, 3 to 9. Uh, or you can always make an appointment. And you can look at any of our galleries. This is just our dining gallery. Uh, it's a gallery at most times at Kirk's. It's just kind of a rotating uh, bunch of pieces that are here by artists that have been here in the past. Um, as usually in the front, we'll have our new work, have the new art, have the new show, and this is just kind of a rotating cast of characters. And uh, we move the furniture around all the time. So come down in the next two weeks, check out this show, Seeing Patterns, out in the front gallery, uh, collaboration with Creativity Explored. Come back in the dining gallery, check all this work out. Gene Pazusta we talked about, we had my t-shirts. Marla Goodman, Emily Davidson, Jody Leitner. We got quite a few Jody Leitners down here. If you're a fan, you can come down and check out different stuff by here. We, this is the only piece we have by Juan. Um, hopefully in the future we'll get more, but we got to sell this one. So come on, come on. Anything else to say? Oh, tune in this Friday, Kirk's Grocery. Kirk's Grocery. Kirk's Grocery. That is the name of the place. This Friday, and we do these live streams, but Friday's live stream, just like last Friday's live stream, these are totally different live stream experiences. Yeah, they're not like this. They're a little more about people, about musicians, about artists uh, in person talking to them. So there'll be interviews, skits. We're going to try to work up some skits. If you have a skit in mind, you feel free to send that in. And if you have ideas for the monologue, exactly. send it in. Exactly, yeah. The monologue is, you know, we're going to try to do monologues about art. Uh, who's a good guy? Who's a good guy? Art. That oh, was art. A joke. That was a joke. That was a fantastic joke. Yeah? Yeah. Did it get you? That one got me. That one really worked. All right, we'll see you in the future. Thanks for tuning in, everybody who is watching. We really appreciate it. Um, we always take donations, uh, Venmo at Kirk's Grocery, PayPal, Kirk's Grocery at gmail.com. Uh, times have not been extremely tough on us, but we do appreciate your support. So if you could go to our website, come on down, help us out with a couple dollars uh, if we entertained you at all. Um, we love you. We love making art. We love sharing art. So uh, we'll see you in the future. Good night, everybody.